Welcome to a lesson on free damped motion, including over damping, critical damping, and under damping. We know from previous lessons, if we have a mass attached to a spring, as shown here on the left, where m is the mass, k is the spring constant, c is the friction or damping constant, big F of t is an external force, and x is displacement, we can model the system using mx double prime equals big F of t minus cx prime minus kx, where mx double prime is the force of the mass, big F of t is the external force, negative cx prime is the friction or damping force, which is proportional to velocity x prime, and negative kx is the force of the spring, which is proportional to displacement x. If we isolate big F on the right, we have mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals big F of t. For free damped motion, big F, or big F of t, is identically zero, meaning always a zero function, and c is greater than zero. Simplifying, we have the differential equation for free damped motion of mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals zero. Once again, we should recognize this as a second order linear homogeneous ODE with constant coefficients, which we can solve using a characteristic equation. Notice the corresponding characteristic equation is mr squared plus cr plus k equals zero. Determining the roots or solving using the quadratic formula. In the traditional quadratic formula, x is r, a is the coefficient of r squared, b is the coefficient of r, and c is the constant. This gives us r is equal to negative c plus or minus the square root of the quantity c squared minus four m k all divided by two m, which we can also write as two parts as shown below. We know from solving the similar differential equation a y double prime plus c y prime plus c y equals zero, the types of solutions affect the form of the general solution. And the same holds true, but also the discriminant, or in this case, c squared minus four m k, indicates whether we have over damping, critical damping, or under damping. When the discriminant, or c squared minus four m k, is greater than zero or positive, we have over damping. When it's equal to zero, we have critical damping, and when it's less than zero or negative, we have under damping. Let's take a look at each case. The first case is when c squared minus four m k is greater than zero, so the discriminant or the number under the square root is positive, we know we have two real distinct roots, r sub one and r sub two, and therefore the general solution is x sub t equals c sub one times e to the power of r sub one times t plus c sub two times e to the power of r sub two times t. Let's look at a graph of over damping. Since r sub one and r sub two will always be negative, x of t approaches zero as x approaches infinity. Thus the mass will tend towards the rest position as time goes to infinity. And here are a few sample plots for over damping. Notice no oscillation occurs, and in fact the graph crosses the x-axis at most once. Next we have c squared minus four mk equals zero. In this case we have what's called critical damping. So the discriminant is equal to zero, then r sub one equals r sub two, and we have two equal roots, which are equal to negative c divided by two m. Again, because c squared minus four m k is equal to zero. In this case, the general solution is x of t equals c sub one times e to the power of r t plus c sub two times t times e to the power of r t. Again, this should seem familiar. It's the same thing we were doing before, except now the general solutions are x of t rather than y of x. The behavior of a critically damped system is very similar to an over damped system. After all, a critically damped system is in some sense a limit of the over damped systems. Since these equations are only an approximation to the real world, we are never critically damped. It is a place we can only reach in theory. We are always a little bit under damped or a little bit over damped. And now let's look at the last case where c squared minus four m k is less than zero or negative. In this case we have under damping. So if the discriminant is negative or less than zero, we know we have two complex solutions or two complex roots. So if the solutions are alpha plus or minus beta i, alpha is negative c divided by two m, and beta i is equal to the square root of the quantity c squared minus four m k all divided by two m. After simplifying, beta is just the coefficient of i. In this case, our book shows the general solution in a slightly different way. Instead of using beta, 
omega is used, but omega is equal to beta. So if r sub one and r sub two are two complex roots, then x of t is equal to a times e raised to the power of negative c divided by two m times t. But again, negative c divided by two m is just alpha. And then we have times cosine omega t, but again, omega is just beta. And then plus b times e to the power of negative c divided by two m times t times sine of omega t. Using trigonometry though, this can also be written as c times e to the power of, again this is just alpha times t times cosine of omega t minus gamma. And now let's look at a graph of underdamping. This graph shows underdamping with the envelope curves above and below. So the underdamped motion is the curve in the middle. Notice x of t approaches zero as t approaches infinity. So again, the figure also shows the envelope curves, which are c times e to the power of negative c divided by two m times t, and negative c times e to the power of negative c divided by two m t. The solution is the oscillating curve between the two envelope curves. The envelope curves give the maximum amplitude of the oscillation at any given point in time. For example, if you are bungee jumping, you are really interested in computing the envelope curves as to not hit the concrete with your head. I hope you found this helpful.